So we want to solve this equation, v squared plus 8v plus 12 is equal to 0, to get the, the v by itself. Um, so what are our options? In module 10, we're going to see an option that has nothing to do with factoring. But at this point in the course, factoring should always be a method of first resort, in my opinion, because it typically is actually simpler to pull off, if you can pull it off, than using the quadratic formula, which is the new thing in module 10. Um, but for the sake of this problem, what can we do with v squared plus 8v plus 12? All right, so that says 2 and 6. What role are 2 and 6 playing in this problem? What are you going to use 2 and 6 to do? Yeah, it's the solution to that sum and product game, the winner of the sum and product game wherein we're looking for two numbers which multiply together to give us 12 and which add together to give us 8. And as that says, 2 and 6 fit that bill perfectly. How would you know to multiply the two numbers to get 12? So we're trying to use these numbers to reverse the distributive process, the FOIL, which would produce v squared plus 8v plus 12 if we were to multiply it back out. And so we look at the v squared and we decide that we can break a part of v squared into a v times a v. If we're trying to factor, if we're trying to break this thing down and make it into simpler pieces, then breaking v squared into a v times a v seems like a good idea. But then, and this was your question, we look at that constant, the 12, and we reason that if one of the terms in each of these binomials is v, then when I do my FOIL, v times v is going to give me the v squared. But the other terms in these binomials had better just be numbers. In other words, these other terms shouldn't have any v's in them. They should just be numerical. And if they are, then the only way to make this 12 is to multiply in the L step of FOIL, the lasts, the second term times the second term, multiply those numbers to give me 12. So that's why we use the product as the first consideration, the first thing we want is to find that pair of numbers, find any pair of numbers that multiplies together to give me 12. And then look through that list and find out which pair of them also happen to add together to give me 8. And the reason that we want that, let's take our 2 and 6, is because of the O and the I part of FOIL. Right? The two products that are going to come from the product of the first term in one of the factors by the second term in the other factor. And because in each, Sorry. go ahead. Two and six, right. And I, I chose two and six here, firstly because they multiply together to give me twelve. But secondly, because they also happen to add together when I multiply the uh, the two here by the v there, I'm going to get two v. When I multiply the six here by the v there, I'm going to get six v. And when I add all of this stuff together, the 2v and the 6v are going to add together as like terms and give me the 8v, which is exactly the middle term that I was looking for. So that's why the sum and product game works the way that it does. Another way to see it, by the way, this is slightly more complicated, so feel free to ignore it if you wish but it ties into a method that we also talk about in Module 8, is to think about it as a splitting of the middle term, the 8v, which is here in the middle, a splitting into 2v plus 6v. And splitting that middle term then allows us to factor this expression by grouping. In other words, factor the first pair of terms, factor the second pair of terms, and then each of those magically is going to have a common factor. From the first pair, I can factor out a v times v plus 2. And from the second pair, I can factor out greatest common factor there is 6. And its cofactor is also v plus 2. And seen in this light, both of these terms have a common factor of v plus 2 that we can then factor out. And after I've factored out that v plus 2, what remains is a v 
from the first term and a plus 6 from the second term. So that's another viewpoint on why this works. Right? Uh, we can use that 2 and 6 to split the middle term, factor by grouping, and get us to where we're so going. So the answer for this is b plus 2? After all, factoring is only useful insofar as it helps us to do the step that comes next. Right? Uh, so don't rest on your laurels at this point, even though it's tempting. Um, having successfully factored this, what does that permit us to do that we couldn't do before? And this is the part that isn't on our quick facts right now. What can I do to solve this equation that I couldn't do when it was in this form? Subtract. Multiply. Multiply how? The entire, the, no, the entire point of factoring is that if I have a factored expression on one side of an equation and the other side of the equation is 0, then because 0 is a special number, it has this hallowed place among all real numbers, it has the property that the only way to get 0 when we multiply is for one of those factors which has been multiplied to be itself 0. All of which is a long-winded way to say that v plus 2 times v plus 6 is equal to 0 must imply that one of those factors on its own must have been zero. This is the all-important property. This property is the reason that we factor. If it were not for this fact, factoring would be completely uninteresting to us, and every algebra student would probably breathe a sigh of relief. Right? Yeah. Um, but because factoring helps us to do this is what makes factoring powerful, is what makes it useful. It can take what was a complicated equation of degree 2 and split it for us into two simpler equations of degree 1. Because we can solve v plus 2 equals 0 using the typical tools in our handbag. How do I solve v plus 2 equals 0? Yeah, just subtract 2 from both sides. We get v equals negative 2. v plus 6 equals 0? Subtract 6 from both sides and get v equals negative 6. So the entire point of studying factoring is that it permits us to do this. Once I have a factored expression on one side and a zero on the other side, that zero I, I like to call the big green light. Right? If we have a zero on this side, it's a green light for us to split apart the two factors on the other side, give each factor its own zero, and then solve each of the simpler equations that you get. And so in our example, the solutions are v equals negative 2 and v equals negative 6. So this is 